Hello and welcome to another Nicometer tutorial. Uh, again, a Facebook follower did a very kind donation and asked me if I can show him how I did this picture you see here and if we can recreate this. Uh, yeah, this, we can recreate it, of, uh, yes, of course. Uh, but this is done in uh, Octane Render and he needs it for the physical render. And yeah, and we will try now uh, to achieve this or uh, something like this, a similar result with the physical render. So we will uh, make this object, we uh, texture it, we light it, then uh, we go to Photoshop, do some color correction and uh, make some lens flare and something else. Here I did not have to make the lens flares and here everything <laughs> Octane does itself so I was surprised I get these nice uh, reflections over this object and something else. Here are no lights, nothing else, it's just a background picture. And But Octane does, he does it his way and this comes out. I was really, really surprised in a nice way of course. Okay. Good, so let's start. Why not? We start with a simple cube. So, here I need uh, oops, the x axis, I think, at 1000. I can't, re I can't really remember uh, the exact dimensions and everything I used in the project. But, 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 we will find our way. So, the segments take some, uh, let's say 20, here 2, and here 2. Or, no, let's make 3. So, yes, something like this. And now we copy this cube, we need it later on. So, uh, select the cube, hold your control key, and just drag it up or down and you have a copy of this cube and we uh, deactivate it for the moment. This cube here, let's call it, this will be the outer side, so, so let's call it outer, why not? And we convert it, I do it with my edit my script, you know it, you can press just C on your keyboard and then go to the point mode and, and right click optimize. But this edit optimize script does everything, uh, you know it. And then it will be the last time I say it. You will find the, the uh, download description, uh, the download link and everything in the description. So it's a free plugin and stop now. So <laughs> just press it, okay. Now I go in the point mode and just delete these points here. I don't need the top polygon here, polygons here. So you have one more. Just delete it. Okay. And now I want to bend this guy here. I do it with the spline wrapper. So first I need a spline. I need a circle spline and 400 should be, yeah, that's okay. And under the outer here, no point one. so uh, select the outer and go to the deformers and shift click the spline wrap here. And so we shift click uh, this spline wrap, this deformer uh, becomes a child of this outer here. Okay, I don't want to see it in the editor. Uh, the next thing is we are in the spline wrap and you have here a slot for a spline and here we drag our circle spline in. And we get this. Okay. Now we want to uh, uh, rotate it a little bit, this is spline wrap. So go to the spline wrap, go to the rotation. And here with the spline Let's rotate it a little bit. So here I wanted the, the open side a little out to the outside and 
the other one to, to, to the inside, something like that. Okay. The next thing is, of course, we want a little thickness for our object here. So, deactivate the spline wrap for a moment. Go to the outer object, polygon mode. Now we have two uh, possibilities to do it. We can uh, uh, make it with the close surface. So if we put this in a close surface, you see, as a, with no subdivisions. But if we go now to say minus 15, you see, it doesn't look really nice here, but you, you won't see it in the in the result. But but, and I cannot make subdivisions here uh, on the on the top. So if I do subdivisions, I have everywhere subdivisions, and this I don't want. So, and I don't have subdivisions here on the top. So so I have to, I have to convert it and bury it to something else because later we we put it in the subdivision surface. So I don't want the closed surface here. It would it would be uh, better with the closed surface if it works nice because we can later on uh, change the thickness and everything. But we can do it with the, the extrude as well. So go to our outer and select all polygons with Control A. Now D for extrude. And create caps must be on. And we want to extrude it about minus 15 here. We can put it here, minus 15. And with one subdivision. Okay. Now I have my subdivision here. And I get a nicer uh, edge, a nicer round edge then. It looks better so. We can put it now in the subdivision surface and you see what I mean. Uh, select your outer, alt click on the subdivision surface and now we have here a nice round edge. This is exactly what I want. Okay, and so now we can activate our spline wrap. Whoops, and we have this nice shape here. Mm. Uh, let's go to this to display to ISO palms. It looks better better for my eyes. <laughs> Don't want to see the circle in the editor. So okay, the next thing is we take our cube. We copied before. Activate it, and we steal the spline wrap here. So select the spline wrap. Control and drag it under the cube. Whoops. And again, we put the cube under subdivision surface. And so we filled this thing. But I want to make it here a little smaller. So let's say 190 to 190. And you see here we intersect. And so we go to the spline wrap. And so on the from and to, we go here up a little bit. It should be almost enough. Maybe a little more. Uh, 1.5 is okay. And here the same, but in the other direction. So go down. Okay. Good. That's it for this so, so far. This is the shape. And now we start to uh, to rename this whole thing <laughs> first. So out uh, here in uh, and here in uh, okay. Now we put everything, we don't need this cube anymore here. We put everything in another object. Alt G. And so object. 
and now I make, uh, I want, we start with uh, texturing, lighting and everything. And I do it as I do it every time. I do it with my uh, Scene Rig Pro, but you can do it without the Scene Rig Pro, of course. So, so map a, a HDRI on the sky and, and, and I did, I did some uh, uh, tutorials where I show how to do uh, a, comp a composition without my rig, so you don't really don't need it in my rig, but it makes life much easier, <laughs> believe me. So, okay, I go to the to my rig. So the 3.1 is out now, now so everybody who bought it so should uh, uh, should already have an email with the new link for for the update. So just double click it and we have a new scene. Then we go to the other scene, go to the object, control C for copy, back to the here and control V for paste. Now we have our object here. Okay. So we don't need, at first we don't need here a floor. So no floor, we need nothing here. Then I go to my camera, activate it and go to the depth. Somewhere like here, a little up with the camera. Okay, and no pitching, so I can be sure the camera is totally in front now. Okay. And now we want a background. And for the background, we, can, we can't use the same background uh, as I have in my original background here, because this is not a free one, this is a bought one. But we search for a similar on the SIBL loader. And here we have a nice one. And we take this HDRI. But first, we don't take the HDRI, we take the JPEG. This is, and I show you why. Uh, the HDRI is just for lighting and reflection and something else. And here I want, we need a, a compositing. And for the compositing, we can't work with a spherical a picture like this. This is a spherical picture. Uh, spherical projection and we can we don't we can't work with this we have to make an a uh, background image first so we take this uh, jpeg you have everything you get a project file and you will have everything in, in the project file every picture and everything so uh, we take this and drag it oops let's see and drag it here in the hdr file and scene by camera on no it was but it is not a bad idea to save it, this file for the moment. So just save it and save it under my desktop and say shiny. Okay. Uh, hide the background for the moment. And now we can go to here and rotate it horizontal and search a nice spot here. And I would say yeah, here, it's nice. Okay, this should be nice here, should be okay. So, and we need this picture here. And this we can later on put here in our background image. So what we do is just render this picture, nothing else. First, let's see which, which uh, color profile, profile is the better one. Linear is too bright, okay. Let's see, sRGB. And this we render with a high render setting here. With the high GI we don't need for this. And let's say we make a full HD picture. So 1920 to 1080. Okay. And let's render this for the moment. So. Percent. Okay, now I have this picture and I 
save it as uh, yeah, PNG 16 bit is okay. Okay, save it on the desktop, a shiny PNG is okay. And now I can drag in here the HDRI instead of the JPEG. So, because we need it for lighting and everything. So, okay. Now, see the camera off. And now we go to the background and floor. Use background picture, yes, we want. And we use this background picture we did now. So, we have this background, background picture now. With this we can work. So, the next thing is, let's blend in our object again. So, maybe go a little deeper. So, something like that. A little up, maybe. Okay. And now if we render this, we... Let's go to the render settings for the moment, like low GI, so it works faster. And now if we render this, we won't see any shadow on the floor and something else, so let's see. You see, then it looks like it would... Uh, uh, shrimp, what mean shrimp? It, like it would flow or fly or something else. No shadows here. And for this, we have our background and floor in the scene rig. And just compositing floor on. This is the first thing. But we won't see nothing now because the floor is here. So let's go in the side view. We have here the floor. And Floor, move up, down, move the floor down to here. Okay. And now we should see shadows and something else. You see, now we have nice shadows and now it looks like it stands directly on the floor. You see the, the uh, difference, no floor and with floor. Okay, the next thing, of course, we can uh, make now the floor a little shiny if we want. You see the reflection, it will make more shiny and blurry reflections. And you get very nice. So, like here, these blurred reflections we get here as well. Too much, something like that. Ah, that's okay. So now we need textures. Let's start with the glass texture. Well, let's start with the inner textures, with, so we can see later on how the glass looks like with the inner object. Okay, so. Let's double click here in the texture manager and double click the texture. Name it in. And what do we do here? We will take luminance. No reflection. Uh, no, no specular reflection, of course, but no specular. So remove it. Add GGX. Doo -doo -doo. And Dielectric and what do beer? Why not beer? <laughs> okay, not so much reflection, something like that. We can change it later on, of course. And now we put it on our inner object here. So, inner. Okay, and I see that's too bright. Something like this should be okay. Okay, and I don't want that this uh, inner object illuminates the scene. So so I go to illumination here in the texture and generate GI. No, I don't want it. So 
uh, yes, and when I want some, some stripes here. So let's go to the luminance channel, texture, and here we I use surface and checkerboard. Sounds crazy, but it is so. Here, null and first on 150, I think, should be okay. Yep. And we have this pattern here. And now I want to make it a little goldish. Okay, let's say that's okay for the moment and now we do the outside. This will be a transparent, something like a plexiglass. This is outer. No color, transparency of course. Here we go to something like a set plexiglass. Okay and put it on our outer here it doesn't matter it's on the other subdivision surface already but i uh, i prefer it here so of course we don't see our glass now here i want an absorption color and i pick something out from the scene here so let's say something like this here okay an absorption distance of 10 should work yes it does and then 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 and exit reflection is okay for this scene this is a little abstract it's okay go back with the brightness here Okay. Here it's totally on you how you want it. We can go back a little here. Yes. This won't make much difference here if I play here uh, because we have here color. Okay, and something like this, but not. Let's play with the refraction. Diamond. Wop. Yeah, that's much more shiny. Okay, yeah, this this looks nice. I think I think I like it. It's a little darker. Yes. Because you do it then uh, uh, however you want, but I don't want to do uh, make too long a uh, nice few uh, zack 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 and try and try and try and try, because the, the tutorial will be too long later on maybe. That's, uh, but I think that's okay. This looks quite nice. Okay, and uh, that's almost it. So. Let's see what we can do here. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I could play the whole day like this. Uh, 
Okay, I will try to have a color that's like this, this, uh, here, this, what's the name for this? I forgot it. So, yeah, it's uh, like a columns or something else, yeah, like these columns. So, yes, 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 yes. I don't need blurriness, I think. The reflectance, maybe a little. Yeah, of course, bye bye with the specular. And hello with the GGX. Haha, <laughs> here we are shiny. That's what I want. Dielectric. Diamond again. And here. Down with the Fresnel strength. Now we have it nice and shiny. Yes. Nope. Nope. Yeah, okay. Now we could render this and go to Photoshop then. So in, in Photoshop then we will uh, make some color correction here and make it a little more crispy, more, 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 a sharper picture and maybe we do some lens flares here on the top. Yes, so I do a, a high render and uh, yeah, I pause it, you, to, you won't realize it, so see you in a second. No, first before I render, I will want to make the picture in the background a little blurry. So uh, I go to my scene rig and the floor I make a little bigger here. So the floor, floor size, whoops, okay. And the picture, the background picture, let's blur it a little bit, so 2% or something, it should be okay. So we have something like a fake depth of field. Oops, let's go back to the low GI here. Yes, now we have a little depth of field here in the background. Yeah, that looks nice, I think. Okay, and now our render. So here is the render, and you see it's a really nice one, and, and uh, because we have no ref no no blurriness in our reflections and such things, you see the render time is quite fast. It's a, it's a quite high settings, and with with uh, not even okay, it's team render. With you know, I have my, my second machine on it, but but uh, if you render it, it renders quite fast. So, but what I see is uh, this. This inner one, it doesn't look really nice, it looks so flat. Uh, maybe we do some bump here on, on the inner one. So let's see what we can do here. Uh, let's deactivate the camera for the moment. So we can play here and uh, yeah, deactivate, uh, hide our outer object. Now you see, and uh, it's not really nice here, but if we render, so yeah, render settings again to low, so. We, okay. And now let's try what we can do here. We go to the luminance and steal our no, we don't have to steal it. This we can do. Go to the pump channel and try it with the pump channel. In the pump channel, surface checkerboard as before. Null and 150. But here we don't see nothing. Go up here. And in the reflectance channel. Let's get the pump strength to 100. But this does not really something. A 
let's try it with the normal map. So go to normal, normalizer, so effects, normalizer. Normalizer, where you are, here. And in the normalizer, texture, surfaces, checkerboard, checkerboard, 50. Okay, strength. And now we see something here. Delta should, yeah, here we, s here we see something, yeah, it does something. And now we definitely see something. Let's see, it's okay, okay, okay. Something, yeah, okay. And now go back to our outer. Whoops. We can activate our camera. I think it is better now, yes. And I render it again. No, that's the same here. It looks still flat. And I don't want it. I, in my original uh, picture it's flat too, but uh, but I don't see it so much. But let's try it with uh, displacement, why not? So deactivate the camera. Bye bye. You for a moment. Let's go to the inner. Let's steal our checkerboard here. Copy. And go to the displacement channel and paste it here. Of course, five centimeter would be too much. Let's see what we can do now. Ah, uh, I'm on the low is enough for this. We need subdivision surface. Okay, here <laughs> it does something. <laughs> I don't want it centered, I want just intensity. Okay. Let's see how it looks with the outer thing. Okay, now I try to render this and we will see what we get. See you in a second. Okay, now I see here some uh, this is displacement a little bit and then that's better. So I like it. Okay, let's save it. And uh, let's save this file for Photoshop. So I save it as PSD file, of course. I think 16 bit is okay. Okay, and shiny PSD on desktop is okay. Then let's go to Photoshop. Oops. So, here I open the picture, of course. So, desktop, whoops. Shiny PSD. Okay, 
So the first thing I call is Control J. I copy the background picture. So I every time leave it for the background. I leave it so I have every time the original file. And here I make an. Uh, oops. I make a smart object out of it. Okay. And to filter to the camera raw filter. And let's see what we can do here. First thing I want is uh, clarity. Play with clarity. And you see we get even shinier picture. This is uh, great. I love it. Okay, we don't have some uh, noise or something else here, so we don't have to worry about noise. If it would be noisy somewhere or here, like on the on the on the floor, you can go here to the detail and to the noise reduction and play with the luminance noise, and you see you can uh, blend out the noise. But of course, you blend out this. Uh, this object too, but you can avoid this. I show you for the moment. You can, uh, let's say, we want it like this, but we want just the floor with uh, without noise. So go to OK. And here, press on the mask here, on the filter mask. Then you press uh, Alt I, no Alt I, not Control I for invert this mask. Yes. Now you see the uh, effect is, is away and with, a, with, with this mask selected and the white, white brush, go to the brush and the white brush, you can now uh, brush over, this, over, the, over these parts where you don't want noise, so you can do something like this. So. And then you have just noise reduction where you where you want it like so something like this here yep and now we have a very clean but I don't want it like this so uh, make it white again this mask so, so white and go back here to the Filter and whoops. So, okay, I just want this clarity here. Maybe with the vibrance a little bit, can try. Yeah, that looks great. Okay. And I think this this first thing, and it's a big difference. Look at this, how shiny this is. And now I want to make uh, on top other filters with the Nick filters. They are free too. And uh, the link is in the description, of course. So make a new layer out of these layers here. This shortcut for this is Control, Alt, Shift and E. Now you have uh, all layers together in one new layer. I'm rust. Uh, I make a smart object out of it, out of it again, and to go to the filter, Nick collection, and go to the color effects pro filter. Okay, the first here is darken light and center. Normally it, it, it's I use it every time and let's see if I use it here. And well, maybe I don't need it here because I use later on in, in a vignette. So let's now you can go through the filters. So okay, I don't want this one. Let's let's just go through the filters and stop there where we say okay, what's this? Brilliance and warmth. Uh, activate and deactivate. If I don't see many difference, so brilliance and warmth. Next one is soft focus. 
Und, äh, äh, no, I don't need it. So next one. Where we are now? Come on, soft focus. Color. Pooh. <laughs> it's it's on you. Yeah, it looks great, but uh, we could use it. But I don't need it, so so. Colorize what's that? Contrast color range. Let's do the difference here. Yeah, this I take. Okay, and now I want to add an, another filter. So I go here to to add. I don't know. In, uh, I have here the German version, but uh, here should uh, <laughs> uh, read uh, add. Yeah, of course, add a new filter. So we were by contrast color range. Now contrast only. Is this too much? So what's that? Cross processing. Mm, do not really need it, but you can go here and you have different effects here. You see? Well, I don't need the cross processing. Go to dark contrast. No. What we have here, dark and light and center, as I said, I don't need it here because I use laid down and, and uh, vignette. Detail enhancer, that's too much here. Don't need it. Duplex, no. Dynamic skin softener, what can he do for us? No difference, okay. Uh, the film effects I don't need. Fog, I don't need foliage. Here you can change uh, some colors you can have here. But I don't need it here for our picture. Maybe this one, but... Ah, why, why not? I know. <laughs> Does not make much difference, but I take it. No, I don't take it. <laughs> no, no, neutral density gradient. I do. Yeah, why not? Is the top a little bit darker? Okay. Uh, then add a new filter. Let's see. What, uh, it looks nice, but not for my picture now. Image border maybe maybe later because we get a nice contrast here. Uh, but maybe later after a vignette or something else. Indian summon no. So 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 so. No. Pro contrast. Makes no difference. Reflector effects. Looks nice, but not for our picture. Not, for me at least, not. Okay. That's the last one with white neutralizer. No, I don't need it to. So I just need these two filters here. Okay. Uh, nice. Now we have this difference. Yeah, 
if you don't want uh, it so much, uh, you can play with the opacity and go, you can go back with this influence of this filter. Yeah, maybe something like that. Yes. So uh, the next thing we can make some lens flares here on the lights. It's not really uh, necessary here on, on in this picture because the lights are very uh, uh, not 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 so bright. So, so but I want to show you how you can make the lens flare. It's uh, yeah. Of course, you can make just. Uh, let's make all together again with with all layers together with Control Alt Shift E and smart object out of the of it. Of course, you can make an filter now go to filter render filter lens flare but you see we have a just such a small uh, preview window here don't know why uh, adobe makes such a small window here uh, you can't resize it nothing it, it's unusable for me but but uh, so uh, you have to be so careful where you go with, with this uh, light here but I found uh, a way to make it exactly how we are, uh, where I want it, and this is my way here. So uh, I go to my info window. If you don't have it here somewhere, you just go to window and info, you get it. And I go with the mouse over my uh, light here. And now I can see here in X, Y, I see the coordinates for this light. Okay, now I have the coordinates. That's 917 to 15. And I write it on my other screen here. I write it 917 to 15. So I can remember. And uh, now I make a new layer, but with uh, I hold my alt key and press on new layer and here let's name it lens flare lens flare and I want it in screen mode and with black color field okay now I make a smart object out, out of it I have a shortcut for this, but it is, and so you can right click and smarter and convert to smart object. And now I go to lens flare. To go to my filters, lens flare, render lens flare. And if you click with your Alt key in this preview window here, you have the possibility to, to write in here your coordinates. So we had. 917 to 15 okay this is this light here and this, this i want this lens flare this is okay i can choose between some other lens flares but i want this one here uh, yeah let's say i want this one okay and the brightness with 90 should be okay i think and you see we have now a lens flare here and it goes nice over our object here. And the nice thing here is, of course, we can change the color. So if we go on our lens flare layer, and now with hue and saturation, I click on my hue and saturation, and I have it uh, like this, so, so it becomes automatic, uh, automatically <laughs> a clipping mask, so here. But normally you have it like like this, and I just want that this this uh, UV saturation so, so it would uh, inf influence our whole picture. But I want that it just goes on the on the uh, lens flare. So I make it. You can make it with right click and create clipping mask. Or or you press. Uh, to go with the with alt key and between the layers until you get this this symbol here and just click once now it's and now it affects just our 
lens flare and I want a lens flare like like this, yeah? color like the object. Uh, okay. I have now this. And now I want another uh, lens flare. And so I go to my picture, uh, to, to my picture here, and to the, the this layer, and maybe it's, it's, this layer is okay too, of course. Go to my info, and let's see the coordinates of this light here. This is 342 to 45. I write it on 342 to 45. Okay. Now I go back to my uh, to my lens flare layer. And again, go to filter, lens flare. Okay. And now, alt and click in the preview. And here I had 3, 42 and 45. Okay. The second lens flare here. But this I don't want so bright, so I say here about 40. Okay. We have the second one, and make, let's make a third one here. Again, go to our info, go to our 1519 to 47. 9514 to 47. Hope that's okay now. Let's see again. Uh, should be okay. So, on the lens flare, filter, lens flare, alt, click in the preview window, 1514 to 47. Okay, here is 40 is okay with the brightness. Okay, but we have the next one. And now, if I say they, they are too uh, bright, let's say, so you can play just here, uh, click on the layer and play with the opacity of the layer. Go, go, go back with this. Or you say, uh, just the side ones are too bright, these two. So you can go to the mask here, to the filter mask, take a black brush, and let's say make an opacity of about 20, so press just the, the number 2 on your keyboard. You have 20 now. And go over the filter with the black brush. You see, you can make it less, but the, the middle one is okay. And so you get a really nice lens flare. And, but you see, it, it uh, the lens flare goes until here on the floor. If you see it, now on the floor and here, it goes until the floor. But if I don't want this, it's very easy to. You go again to activate uh, your filter, ma uh, filter mask here. You see it with these corners, with the white corners that it is activated. Take again a black uh, brush and now is 100% opacity, so press null on the keyboard. Make it a little bigger. This is, you can make it bigger and the brush bigger and uh, smaller with Alt key and right mouse click and uh, go from left to right. And if you want to make uh, the smoothness or the sharpness of the, of the brush, Alt key and right click and up and down. So you get it sharper and smoother. Okay, so I want it like this. And now I just go with, with the uh, mask selected. Go here over the floor. So, and now this lens flare works just on the top and not on the on the floor and I think it looks really nice okay 
And now I can uh, select the top layer and Control Alt Shift E, everything together, and make a smart object out of it. And maybe again we go to the row filter and give it a little more clarity again. Maybe a little more contrast and a little brighter, maybe so. Something like that. And last but not least, we can make uh, now a vignette. So we can go again to our camera row filter here, double click it, go to FX, and here we have vignetting and make a little vignetting so that the eyes look at the object and not around. Okay. And again, uh, Control Shift Alt E, Smart Object, and now I take new collection filter and take this border. Let's see image border here. We have a lot of types here. See type number four is okay. And we have our picture ready. With wonderful nice lens flares, with a sharp shiny object, with a depth of field in the background, everything we want. Yeah, that's it. I hope you liked it. Uh, and yeah, if you have questions, just ask somewhere here in the comments or on Facebook or, 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 or. and uh, yeah, uh, maybe I do another tutorial this weekend. I don't know what I do. Uh, we have a long weekend here, so Monday is off too. And yeah, tomorrow is barbecue. So maybe uh, I'll find, find time on Monday. Uh, we will see. Okay, so I wish you a nice uh, Saturday and uh, yeah, bye bye and tschüss und baba.